Welcome to BBC Podcast, Tampa Day with Tucci again. Got another King's Table with a special guest. I'm going to run the intro, hand it over to JP. Oh, baby, you so juicy. Do you mind if I slice, slice? You like the way I work you out. I don't mind if you tease me now. My lady, you deserve a crown now. I like it when you take it to the ground. Do your dance, mommy. Honey, I like the way you work for me The way you move your ass got me going down You got it, girl, you got it Everybody make sure you like, comment, subscribe Check out the merch, bbcmerch.com Share the video, drop us a comment If you like the content, you don't like the content We don't care, we just want to hear from you Let's introduce our special guest Returning again you already know. Hello, how you doing, man? Pretty good, pretty good, <laughs> pretty good. There we go, man. Yeah, man. Nice, nice, nice. So we'll let you introduce yourself, man, and see you brought your product with you. Okay, so I'm RP Thor, and I've been on the podcast once before, and we had a great time yeah, chopping yeah, it sir. up. And we kind of we kind of teased it because uh, I was in just the finishing process mm-hmm. of writing my first book. Mm. And uh, it's been a two-year-long process, a little bit longer than that, and this is the result. And it's titled A Dominant Masculine Presence. In fact, it actually has, it it, it leads a little bit to what it's about on the cover. It's learning how to cultivate your authentic self as a man and display supreme confidence and control over how you are perceived by others. Okay. So that's kind of what it is. It is Mm -hmm. a guidebook, but it goes into what is the problem today with masculinity in crisis, mm-hmm. I think we can all agree that it is. Yeah, for sure. And we kind of address that problem of where it came from. And you probably wouldn't be surprised, but it really started, you know, probably 70 years ago, or at least started there and really intensified around 50 years ago. Mm. Um, and I talk about that, not in a conspiratorial way, in a kind of a factual way with what's happened to kind of emasculate men in the West. Mm-hmm. And there's, there's reasons for it. There's actually economic reasons for it. So I talk about that. Okay. Unfortunately, all of us, or at least guys younger than me, suffer through it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Suffer through being taught how to behave in a non-masculine way, and they suffer the consequences in their lives in you know, how to execute on being a man and being successful and you know, doing right by themselves, mm. for themselves, mm. Uh, I know Rollo likes to call it um, being your own mental point of origin. Others call it the center point of origin. I talk mm-hmm. a lot about that in there and why you need that. I talk about what the core attributes are of masculinity. And I do it in such a way that it crosses all cultures. It's just not about Western culture. I did the research worldwide. There's a lot about masculinity that crosses cultural boundaries. Many would have you believe that it's it's socioeconomic, it's, it's, it is blank slate, it's taught to you, but even in isolation, men still behave a certain way, and they still perform rites of passage for young boys. Mm-hmm. They, they even have rights for young girls to be girls. These roles mm-hmm. seem to be the most efficient way for human beings to live and be fulfilled. Any other way seems to cause a lot of grief in life and unfulfillment. In the West, we call it unhappiness. Mm -hmm. He wasn't making me happy. Those people didn't make me happy. Mm -hmm. As if they had the authority or the responsibility to make you happy. So I kind of address it in there, and then I give kind of, it's not really secret sauce, but there's seven skills that I talk about that every man should try to acquire. And the nice thing about it is you only need to be above average in three. Mm. And by being above average in three of those skills, you'll dominate your surroundings, Mm. literally. And don't misinterpret, it is a dominant masculine presence, but it's not about domineering. Mm-hmm. So does it raise, I mean, is it even harder to accumulate six to seven of or like, or the all seven? It is more difficult to accumulate all seven, but you don't have to. Uh, let's just go through them. Okay. So you guys have all heard of the core four. Yeah. It's been pretty popular in our space, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. Money, muscles, mm-hmm. game, yeah. and frame. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's set that aside. We all know kind of what that is Mm. right now, being in this space. Then let's talk about another popular concept in this space. Alpha. Mm -hmm. Alpha male. 
Yeah. I'm the alpha male. Mm-hmm. You're beta, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, beta. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. But anyway, you've got alpha, beta, delta, gamma, mm-hmm. omega. Oh, yeah. you ever search for sigma males yeah. online? <laughs> thousands seen. of uh-huh. thousands of sigmas, of right? Yeah. I'm a sigma. I don't fit your mold, but I'm better than all of you, yeah. right? So or the alpha omega. The reason I bring it up before I get to the skills is because it kind of explains a little bit why these skills are so much more crucial and the fact that alpha beta designations are kind of just container words. They're, they're, they're definitely the astrology of the manosphere. Mm. And where they came from, I go over it in the book, they come from uh, wolf studies back in the 60s and 70s, wolves in captivity, and they use them to signify groups of males and even females, mm. okay? And they did that to, uh, in sexual behavior mating behaviors mm-hmm. specifically and they believed that for a long time and it was used across all of um, you know, biology and somebody took it and ran with it in the late 90s as that fits us as human beings problem with that is is when they released the wolves and the same guy that came up with the designations went and did the studies in the wild it didn't hold up at all the behavior <laughs> sexually for mating in the wild was absolutely different so he recanted the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And when you look at it from not only that perspective, but from the wider perspective of biology, mating, and psychology, it doesn't actually hold up. Look at the definitions of an alpha male, beta male, gamma male, particularly sigma, and they line up perfectly with basically astro- astrological symbols. Mm-hmm. I can see myself in that guy. I can see you mm-hmm. in this guy. You're a Sagittarius. You're a Capricorn. Mm-hmm. Alpha, beta, beta, alpha, sigma. Mm-hmm. So it makes you feel a little bit better about certain behaviors and gives you something to hold on to. But where do behaviors come from? From skill sets that you express or actualize in the real world. Mm. So the reason I bring that up is I, I bring it up because it's useful to describe certain people in the book and why they behave a certain way. Mm -hmm. But what I talk about is these seven skills are physicality, psychology, presence, problem solving, Mm -hmm. prosperity, power, and passion. Well, okay, those are just words, right? And they all start with P. Mm -hmm. Great, it's the seven P's. Seven P's. (laughs) And maybe there's an eighth one, right? Mm -hmm. Boom, no, I'm just kidding. (laughs) But they might get you that, the seventh P. But think about it for a minute. Physicality, both mentally and physically, I mean, physical body, you're taking action, you're doing things. You have to be capable physically to move through this world. Even if you're a disabled person, you can do really good with what you have. And that really describes physicality. So physicality is one thing. That's one skill set that you cannot ignore. Mm -hmm. It involves your health as well psychology this is going to be mastering yourself and it's get i get into this later in the book it's about calming that inner voice that alter ego in your head that keeps you up at night talking to you you guys all have it we all do right yeah i actually give you tools and techniques how to slow that thing down so you can enter a flow state you have that psychology but it also addresses why people do the things they do and learning about how men and women interact together whether it's mating or not, how do you interact? Because sometimes you're not looking for a mate. You might have to finesse a woman here or mm. there or mm-hmm. vice versa, or you just want to have a good conversation with somebody because for God's sakes, you're a human being and you're enjoying some company randomly somewhere yeah. and you're just going to laugh about the day. Yeah. And wouldn't that be cool? So that's psychology. It's also the psychology of business, business, money, all that sort of stuff. And then there is presence. Presence is my ability to project who I am authentically wherever I'm at. It involves my outside and how I dress, how I speak, the body language that I use, the pacing, the tonality of my voice. It is presence. You're going to love this because your presence really describes what all the ladies you have here say. They Mm -hmm. want a guy with what? The vibe, yeah, yeah, the vibe, yeah. right? As long as the vibe. So you right. acquire this dominant masculine presence. When I talk to women about this, they get it instantly. Oh, I know exactly that. My dad was like that. Mm, you yeah. know, if they have a strong man in mm. their life or somewhere in there, they will recognize exactly what I'm saying here. And then probably the best skill to have, 
problem-solving skill. Mm-hmm. It, you may not recognize this, but that is a man's primary agency, mm-hmm. problem-solving. Where a woman's primary agency, we say here, is her sexuality. Mm-hmm. Think about it for a minute. What is a man's primary agency in life? Without mm-hmm. problem-solving skills, mm-hmm. you're disposable as heck. You've got to figure yeah. out how to get the money. you got to right? figure out how to do this. you got to figure out how to do this. And women you need problem-solving techniques that. to find right. all that out. Absolutely depend upon That's where it falls into the leadership. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, prosperity. This is your ability to acquire resources for yourself and your loved ones. And when I say resources, it's not just money. It's the ability to acquire them and be able to do so on a, a steady basis and offer some sort of promise of additional resources to come in the future. Prosperity. It's an abundance mindset, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, now here's another good one. Power. What's power, Thor? Power. Let's talk about power. Power is the ability to influence in this context. Mm. Okay. If you have the ability to influence through networks, through your ability to get along with people, mm. have open exchange, this is the exercise of power, to get things done that most people could not get done. And so... I wanted to make sure and mention that's really what power is, Mm -hmm. is that ability to exercise influence and project influence over distances and time. And then, of course, there's passion. Passion is doing what you love and loving life. Having the love wherever you're at, even if it's the shittiest circumstances, to recognize it's good to be alive. Mm -hmm. And so those are the skills of a dominant masculine presence that I really go into. Now, think of it this way. When I say... You only need any three of these to score above average, and you'll be better than 80% of the men out there. Imagine this. Imagine physicality, having excellent physical shape. Imagine having a problem-solving skill, and then having prosperity on top of it. Okay. Can anybody think Brandon Carter? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay, I can name three right yeah, there. Yeah. Now, he probably does better in some of the others, yeah. but that's just three. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be those three. Let's think of it this way. Let's do this, and this is where you might say, Brandon's an alpha. Yeah. Okay, let's do it this way. How about you have psychology, problem-solving skills, and you have prosperity and power? Mm-hmm. Well, maybe that's Jeff Bezos. Maybe okay. not. No. How about a dominant masculine presence? It spans alpha, beta, mm. and this is why it works. Okay. This is why you can be a diplomat, but they always choose diplomats that have a dominant masculine presence. They're yeah. the best. Yeah. Yeah. They're the Henry Kissinger. There are those guys that do that, and I could go through the list. I mean, I could probably call out every one of those skills from uh, Bill Gates down to who's the next uh, athlete out there that's just rocking it. I could do either way, yeah. you know, and I could go through the list and probably call out Andrew Tate's on here, Mm -hmm. or any of the guys like that. But this is what I've discovered over the last five years. You can use alpha, beta, sigma, and all that stuff, but it's not complete. It doesn't give you a complete picture if you really want to understand how a man projects his presence into the world. But with this skill set, you can. Mm -hmm. And I go into the detail in the book. And then on top of that, I go into something called emotional durability, which is really just emotional regulation. You know, if you can regulate your emotions and choose to use your emotions when you want to, both good and bad, you tend to live longer and uh, have a higher and uh, lifetime income than those who cannot. Mm. Interesting food for thought. And I, I cite the studies in there as well. So I thought you guys might find that interesting. And hopefully you got a chance to listen to kind yeah. of a raw audio book that's not available yet. Yeah, straight think, from man? you. Actually, like... I wanted to like follow into like more, but I want to pick up with the book also. I don't know, like to yeah. me, it's better vision for me to oh, pick up some pages from the book and then I'll follow up with the audio. But yeah, no you good. Got a book now. Yeah, yeah book now. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's only been out for three weeks, so okay. I mean, I promised you guys when I was here last that you'd have the first crack at it. Yeah, for sure. You treated me really good, and I really appreciate that. I uh, appreciate you, know, you I'm coming kind down. Of a, a loyal sort of yeah. guy for. Oh yeah, 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 of course, of course. Yeah. Throw it back well, out like that. Actually, it, it, it looks good. Yeah. I'll say real quick, you got to answer a couple questions for us. Sure. All right. So in your definition, does, you know, how society, like, is always demasculating men nowadays and stuff like that, always putting them down. 
just being masculine gets labeled being toxic Mm -hmm. regardless, just as a defensive mechanism for the actual people who (laughs) can't handle it. So do you think toxic masculinity, does it really exist? Or is it just just a a defense that they just... Oh, no, no, no. (laughs) You're going to love this. I actually talk about this and the APA's decision to label masculinity as toxic. But without getting too far into the weeds, uh, this, this has been done... Because it's a complex issue, but it's been done because, well, it's been done for economic reasons. Women spend money. Mm-hmm. Men don't. Women shop. Men buy. It's, it's a very different thing. Mm, okay, I like that. That's a component on a high end. The other component is that um, essentially we had Marxist ideals and Malthusian theory being promoted from the 60s onward. And it's a sad thing because when you combine the two, you have essentially a ideology of oppressed and oppressor mm-hmm. coupled with a ideology that says there's far too many human beings on the planet mm-hmm. and something must be done because we're a virus on the face of the planet, which is complete bullshit. Yeah. Uh, you couple <laughs> those two together and something like an academic system and you get this, this vicious femme-centric social order that views men as oppressors that Mm. must be subjugated. It is a supremacy movement, and it's backed up by Marxist ideology because it serves their end. There is such a thing as useful idiots in Marxist ideology. Mm. I should call it a theology because it is kind of that. And it's by any means necessary to get to the end. And so, look, let them reduce the population by emasculating men and calling men toxic, shaming men. I mean... Sign language came out of this, and I don't mean American sign language. I mean <laughs> shaming, insult, yes, guilt, sure. and the need to be right, which is prevalent, you know. And it, I think it was a plan. Mm. I don't want to offend anybody here, but it started in the black community mm. in the '60s. It's you know, fault. the black mm. community used to have an 88 percent success rate on their marriages prior to 1965. Yeah. Mm. They yeah. did not get divorced; and they had solid families. Mm. What mm. happened? Well, everybody gets to feel that now. Yeah. And, and what's been done there is shameful. I think it should have never been done. And uh, we can thank feminism and Marxism on my book. You know, I think economic prosperity would have done much better. And we'll talk a little bit about why, you know, actualizing yourself and capitalism, earn your way, is the best way, really. Because you have every tool in capitalism, utilizing capitalism to make yourself a success. Every tool that's ever existed. That's a quote from Robert Kiyosaki. Mm -hmm. And with Marxism, you're a victim or you're an oppressor. That's all there is. Mm -hmm. What else is there? It sounds a lot like feminism, isn't it? You're either the woman that's a victim or or you're the man that's the oppressor that must be acted against Mm -hmm. as part of the revolution. So uh, there's been a huge push for men to be essentially taken down several notches and... You want to really get your tinfoil hat on? Let's just say, I mentioned this in the book, but let's just say there's no conspiracies. Mm -hmm. But the evidence is here that in just the last 50 years, there's two indicators that's not good for men and it's not good for women. Testosterone has fallen in men on whole, straight up. Ready? Yeah. So testosterone has fallen 45% in men. Mm -hmm. And the other one, I was reading a book. uh, um, Shoot, it slips in my mind right now. But uh, there's a book that just came out about sperm counts over the last 50 years have fallen 47%. And it's predicted in the book, if it continues at the current rate, which seems to be a linear rate for Mm -hmm. sperm counts, there'll be no sperm left to make anybody pregnant by 2055. Dang. So something's going on, and yeah, it's just like, not time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the book is called Countdown. Countdown. <laughs> Countdown. Yeah, I reference it in the book. Okay. Uh, famous doctor. In fact, she's quite a lefty, but she did the research, and it is what it is. What's going on here? Mm. Testosterone down. What's going on here? Mm-hmm. Hormones are the messengers that travel throughout our body at the speed of blood that make us who we are, and they affect our feelings, our moods, and our emotions. And oh, by the way, I break down feelings, moods, and emotions for men in here because it's very confusing. Nobody's taught 
a base way to deal with them. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually and and this is this is interesting because I did a lot of interviews and a lot of consults here, and I found a concept that men kind of take to better than women, and the concept is this. When I talk about feelings, most people interchange that with emotions. Mm -hmm. But when you look up the actual definition of feelings, what do you see? Something felt in the body. It is actually a sensation. I don't go like this and say, I emoted that can. No, I felt the can. Yeah. Right? Yeah. There's a reason words mean things. Feelings can generate emotions. So feelings are all felt very quickly, very quickly in the brain. I don't know if you know anything about the triune brain theory, but you know, at the level of feeling, it's that basal ganglia. It's going, mm -hmm. it's that lizard brain. You know something touched you, a hot stove did, get away, right? Yeah. The next level is to emote. Emote has some very, very strong actions. They induce additional chemistry to be generated in your body. You know because when you have a strong emotion, do you not get the goosebumps? Do you not get something mm. generating in your stomach? It's pretty sure wild. Starts pumping. Right? Sure. And this is also the chemistry that you'll hear from women is we clicked, we had chemistry. Mm -hmm. That's part of it. Mm. So feelings come first. And then there's this generation of emotions. This is the midbrain. This is that uh, limbic system firing off. It's very quick. And it makes sense evolutionary when you think about it. Having those two systems in place when there's monsters after you and bad things happen is a quick way to stack the odds in your favor to get yeah. out of the way. Sure. Flight, yeah. flight, freeze, right? Yeah. But us humans have something like no other animal has to the degree we do and the thickness we do, and that's the frontal neocortex. It's like 12 millimeters thick. You know, it's, that's amazing. They also call that the uh, uh, human mammalian brain or the mammalian brain or the upper mammalian brain. And what resides there, they think, is a lot of personality and or mathematical cognition or 3D spatial concepts, logic, rationale, for which you can apply the emotions from the feelings you just generated. And when you do that, what do you end up with? Moods. Mm -hmm. So keep in mind, feelings last from seconds to minutes. Mm -hmm. You couple that with emotions, you generate emotion, they can last from, from minutes to hours. Yeah. You couple that with your frontal neocortex, logical, rational thinking, you end up with moods, which can last from hours to days to weeks. Mm -hmm. True. So when you start to make, put that together, we can start to tackle how to regulate the big three. I call them the big three emotions, which plague most guys, okay. which is um, it's anger, fear, and sadness. Okay. And if we can learn to regulate those, dude, you're, you know, you're more than halfway there. Yeah, really, yeah. really being able to rationalize and succeed success in life. Being like the whole structure of uh, masculine presence, how important is being able to regulate your emotions? Yeah, your emotions. As as a man, how would you how would you recommend to subscribers like how important is it? Is it like, it's top three, top five? Well, regulating your emotions is super important. I don't start with that though, because I think I would overwhelm the reader. Mm -hmm. I actually give the guys quick wins. You want to have a projection. I really do lean heavily in the front to uh, body language, voice, voice control. I teach you guys the resonant mass technique for having a masculine voice. I, I won't get into here, we go too yeah. long, but there are techniques you can do to do your voice, to pace it, mm -hmm. how to add inflection, uh, and then also how to use your a face. Actors do this all the time, and I go through some techniques to use your face to emphasize what you're projecting to somebody else or to a group. Uh, some of these come from public speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, I do that. And so some will say, you do that and you couple it with a reinvention of your identity. We're always reinventing our identity. It's mm -hmm. important. I talk about the basic identities that uh, Carl Jung put out there just to give you a reference on what you might want. And then I use some examples of different types of current hero types, current famous people types, men we admire. Mm -hmm. And I ask the reader to grab onto something they can see and start to basically fake it until you're like that. Mm. Because here's the concept from outside in. Doing this with your behaviors will get you small wins. That mm -hmm. will build your confidence. You yeah. have to have some confidence to start to tackle your emotions. Yeah. So I have this question. If you fake it, but you fake it so well that you're actually doing it, Mm -hmm. and it's a part of your identity now, are you really faking it anymore? No, because you made it. You actually have to make it. True. It's now your authentic mm -hmm. self. Yeah. And you got to get past that. 
because you will be beaten down or punched up saying, oh, you're just faking it until you make it. Mm-hmm. That concept is insane because it, everybody starts somewhere. Yeah. You know, from day sure. one. Human beings are the greatest imitators on the planet. Yeah. So use that to your advantage. Now that you've done that and you've had some wins socially, because I give you some exercises, you want, you're going to have wins, you're going to have losses, you're going to get embarrassed. It's okay. Mm-hmm. Accept it. Yeah. Move through it. And a big part of it is, is becoming social and building networks with the community. Yeah. For real, for real. And then the emotional regulation is critical to your fulfillment and success in life. It really, really is. And to having relationships that last. Mm-hmm. We live in the age of reactors. Heck, look at you two guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 80% of us are yep. reacting to other mm-hmm. people's reactions yeah. to other reaction yep. videos. Reactions. Are you kidding Very me? True. Yeah. Very true. Now, you guys have sat here. Mm-hmm. You've talked to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. You know, most people listen to react to you. Yeah. And they can't even let you finish your sentence mm-hmm. before they're reacting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's no emotional control. control. Yeah. You know, I use a big part of Robert Greene's 48 Laws of Power. I can't remember the number off the top of my head, but part of being a dominant, masculinely present man is saying just a little less than is necessary. Mm. Because the human imagination will fill in that gap, and it's always better than the reality. True. Why do you think Instagram works? <laughs> yeah. True. Right? Yeah, true. Uh, for sure. Yeah. And so, and I'll give you another example out of the book. So where emotional regulation comes into play. So for the last 35 years, I've cried three times. That's a release of emotion. You can cry as a man. Yeah. But it should be for you. And it should be under your control. I had a loss of family member, and I weeped. This is probably 20 years ago. And then I accidentally killed one of my favorite dogs. Mm. I went to the backyard and I had a little outing, shall we say. Mm-hmm. That was a sad day. The next time I weeped, I saw something amazing. And that's when my wife was in a severe car accident that broke her neck and made her paralyzed from the shoulders down. And she was in severe pain in traction. I had my mother. I had my ex-wife in the room. I had a friendly female familiar in the room that's a friend our age I had my daughter in the room probably the most important women in my life Mm -hmm. and then of course my wife laying on the bed and not knowing the circumstances whether she would live or die Mm -hmm. and I got along well with all these women of course I started to tear up and I didn't get very far and I could see the panic in all of their eyes from yeah. seeing me start to tear up. Mm-hmm. And I shut that shit down. Mm. Why do you think that is? Because they look for you for strength. That's exactly yeah. right. You're on the masculine person. So, so if, you, if, exactly if they could tell right. it's affecting you, then they're like, oh, shit. And you don't think Who are we going to turn to now? you encounter doesn't look for that, yeah. at least in a wider sense socially. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you believe majority... Women can recognize a masculine presence without without a man speaking? Most can because women are very perceptive of body language. I actually go through that quite a bit. Mm-hmm. How you hold yourself, how you present yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, let's just go through a few. Head up, shoulders back. You know, chest out. Open, relaxed. I'm taking up space without mm-hmm. being obvious. If I do it too much, I'm going to come off as a douchebag, and that's mm. not it. Yeah. You guys know there's resting bitch face, right? <laughs> yeah. You know there's resting douchebag face, too, and you can look at it everywhere. The guy that's got the upturned face all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And then most of those guys think they're freaking killers with the women, too. Oh, yeah. What yeah, do you think? Sure. You think the women can see that from a mile away? <laughs> yeah. Right? So. I'm sure if we can see it, they and, can see it. And you also got to kind of have that water rolling off a duck's back with the gals, and they recognize that. Even if they shut you down... You know what? You're self-entertaining. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. it's an amazing thing to be self-entertaining. Very true. I mean, I don't know this guy, but look at John Zerka. Is he not self-entertaining? <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah. You can't look at that guy. Oh, fuck. Because yeah, he don't care who you laughs, know, who uh, he's entertaining. You have a bit so, of that, and yeah. no one's going to say he doesn't have that presence. Yeah. And every one of those girls notice it. You know they mm-hmm. do, and he calls them out for it. Bravo, bravo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so, yes, they definitely do recognize it. 
And particularly they recognize if they had a strong father figure or a strong male presence in their life that demonstrated those qualities. Okay. Because it comes across as someone that's secure yet comforting that can handle his own. And here's the th- another big key to having a dominant masculine presence is you're not, you're not domineering. If you're domineering, you're controlling. And it's mm-hmm. not about being controlling. You're yeah. in control, mm-hmm. but you're not controlling. You don't have to be yes. because you're projecting your authority as a man mm-hmm. in the space. You don't have to say anything. You don't explicate. You demonstrate. This is hard for guys to do. You can see this all the time. As soon as a guy feels threatened, what do they do? Well, I've done this and I've done that. And, you know, I was a shuttle pilot and I also drove a trash truck for 17 years. And, 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 and. Yeah. That's not... a dominant masculine presence and yeah women can see that a mile away of course they do you know uh, anytime somebody questions somebody and you guys probably ran into it being good interviewers yeah. it, people will start to embellish upon their accomplishments you know mm-hmm. start to share yeah. that a lot side. Yeah. A yeah. Lot. Yeah. and you know what that's a natural thing for all of us to do yeah. but not going too far over that edge and i won't say that doesn't everybody do it everybody has the temptation to do mm. that and our memories aren't that infallible but back from that saying a little less than is necessary very perceptive women see that and they want to know what they, that's that mystery mm-hmm. they want to know more mm-hmm. you know and, and this is another funny story so I'm not a dating coach I don't do anything like that I did this book did start from a lecture series I gave and it was on principles of long-term relationship success coupled with one called how I became durable that was about me suffering a huge electrical burn early in my life and coming back from it. And then there was another one which was called uh, Curing a Dead Bedroom. Out of all of those, I did so many video lectures and I did some uh, seminars on this. This kind of was the outgrowth because a lot I saw the same things going. They needed something a little more tangible because every one of those had something to do with about a man striving to improve and carry his burden of performance forward one thing he was missing is himself as his own center point of origin. Mm-hmm. He comes before everything else, not in a narcissistic way, yeah. but in a way that ensures he can perform and support those around him and lift everybody up. Heck, that is our motto on the Dragon Ship podcast. A rising tide lifts all ships. Yeah. Be the rising tide. Yeah. So a lot of it sounds philosophical here, but it is recognizable because you're subcommunicating this all the time. You're not folding your arms. Your hands are not in your pockets. You don't stand with your feet crossed or your palms backwards with your hands like this <laughs> in the club. These are things that you learn as a strong, dominant, masculine man. How many people know how to give a masculine handshake? No, a a no, classic no. one. Not a lot. Not a lot. Uh, I mean, a lot of guys that want to come off bowl will try to grab your knuckles and squeeze the shit out of oh, them, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So if you get through the book and you get to the quick references, I'll show you the iron finger handshake that once you learn it, you will just love it because it gives you pretty much complete dominance over anybody you shake hands with. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it's a technique that's really simple. It was taught to me many, many years ago. I can't believe this isn't how men shake hands. <laughs> They'll do all this stuff and... I'm not talking a bro handshake. I'm talking yeah. a classic suit and tie yeah. handshake, right? A political handshake, the overclass, do all that. Simple move of this finger right here, and I'm in complete control of a handshake. Nobody can squeeze my hand. Nobody can hyper shake it. And I actually have you off balance and in my space, and you won't know it. I'll show you afterwards. But yeah. it's another point. It's part of that body language when I work with people. Mm-hmm. And I actually ran into guys that kind of were worried about shaking hands with other guys. They didn't know how to behave. Yeah. Interesting. It, it, is it? Yeah. Everybody's the same, right? And everybody's the same coming up. You know, the jocks are said to be what? They're the bad guys now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that was kind of we're bullies, but you know what? It's kinda just now, hard, they yeah. kind of hardened a lot of us, did they not? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I love I my bullies because I fought back at them and yeah, taught me huge them. lessons. Yeah. I really yeah. do. Yeah. I thank God for them. And at least in one case, I got a friend out of it. Oh, well, that always works. Okay. You know, he just didn't know what he was doing, man. He's just trying to figure the pecking order out, right? So sometimes it's just that kind of ignorance. Yeah. And if he had a good dad, actually, you know, that was yeah. dominant and masculine, he, he would have done way better, too. So 
speaking of that, I would see what is your personal feelings on, like I said, like you just spoke up on a male presence and a lot of the majority now, like we're in 2023, a lot of these younger men, some of these men that get lost in their 20s, early 30s, mm. trying to reset themselves, look towards the internet, fall into the manosphere, and, and they're searching and shopping, who should I listen to is the right one. Like, with all these new uh, content creators coming in, the manosphere and everything like that, do you think, as of right now, since you've started, uh, is it getting watered down, or are we getting better content creators when it comes to teaching masculinity and stuff like that? Or are people just going off of what the next person said? Yeah, or are just people just repeating nope. each other? Like, they watch your videos, like, okay, yeah. what's Thor doing? Yeah. All right, let me try that. Okay, now. You know, this is a multivariate issue, and I'm, I'm glad we're where we're at. Okay. Uh, because... Have you seen improvement? It's kind of it's kind of cyclical in nature, but there's more people talking about this than ever before. Mm -hmm. I'd be lying to tell you, and I talk about this in the book. We all stand on the shoulders of giants that came before us. Yeah. So my information is not secret. It's not proprietary. Rolo's isn't either. It was always there. Yeah. You, do. you know, sure. when I say Rolo, it's Rolo Tomasi yeah, from yeah. the Rational Male. Same with Aaron. It was always there. And we just connected a, a theme to give you some thought experiments so that you can interpret the world for yourself. This is a tool set. And what happens is these are such good tool sets. Even if they're shocking to people that are really emotional about it and have fantasies on how things should be and live in those fantasies, uh, there's a lot of money to be made by maintaining those fantasies. So what are you saying, Thor? Well, the, the neoconservatives out there love parts of our space, and they want them for their own. Mm -hmm. But they really hate what we project, and I'll tell you why. They would like us to be the bad guy because they're feminists. Mm -hmm. They say they're not, but there's only one thing that stands between them and Marxist feminism, mm -hmm. and that's abortion. It's just the, it's, it's just the method, not the philosophy. Mm -hmm. It's just the action, not the philosophy. And I could prove this over and over again. Mm. Um, I hate to call people out specifically because it's really not the way I operate, but you can see it everywhere yeah. in the conservative side. Mm -hmm. And uh, the conviction is religious in nature. After the election cycle, we play and we get eyeballs because of our concepts. After the election cycle, that'll die down and it'll still be the core group. If I'm a young guy and I'm looking at this stuff, there's a lot of stuff out there that's going to make you feel good. And that would be emotionalism. Mm -hmm. And emotionalism sells. If your audience has never read Edward Bernays' propaganda written in the 30s, which was utilized by a certain German painter to exercise control over his entire population in the 30s and 40s in Germany, mm -hmm. you should read it written by an American. And we are masters of it. And it plays on emotions. And... So all of our boys that are coming up that are sitting in that space right now in their 30s are emotional. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. speak the, la the, the language of emotionalism. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I can have a beautiful girl next door on Instagram coaching men with nothing but pure emotional word salad. It's crazy. Do you yeah. want the woman of your dreams? Have you always been the man that <laughs> yeah. tries harder? Mm -hmm. Are you that guy? You need to become emotionally available mm -hmm. so that she will see you as an attractive <laughs> man. This is only fans on Instagram for a guy that's lonely. Yeah. Because he sees her, and there's the hope that she's speaking to his emotions, mm. that he will maybe someday find a girl a tenth as good as the one he's looking at right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. In a way, I think that's pretty shitty because yeah. that is not going to go. No. I mean, that stuff works with women and emotional boys that really have not. It, this plagues both men and women. When we talk about emotionalism, it's placed the majority of our society right now at the maturity level of essentially preteen girls. Yeah. Look at social. You tell me it's not like that. No. Look at it's any movie, mm -hmm. any newscast. We have grown ass adults mm -hmm. that act like what? <laughs> and men too, preteen girls. Yeah. Yeah. And the funny thing is, uh, I recognize this because I raised a daughter who acts like a grown woman, yet. When she had her nine years old to fourteen year old girlfriends over, this is it was like watching a fresh and fit show. <laughs> it's like watching the evening news. It's like watching the Kardashians. It's like watching any reality TV show. It's like watching any Netflix special. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, about a woman that's high up in the corporate life, it's like, it's like watching sex in the city. So you have to be careful of those things. There's a lot of emotional programs that make a lot of money. Yeah. The Myers-Briggs personality test, completely debunked, mm. yet it attracts women all the time in corporations to make people feel better about their crappy cube farm existence. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got that one. You've got the five love language. Good insight on how to see how women find emotionalism attractive, pretty damn useless mm -hmm. in application mm -hmm. and a waste of time. But it will be useful to understand how women do kind of think this way because it's emotionalism. Mm -hmm. Uh, so th there is some value there, but it is something I wouldn't. And then you've got the king emotional pile of all the steaming fly infested pile, and that is male vulnerability, mm -hmm. especially all the books that center around Brene Brown's male of emotional <laughs> emotional of vulnerability. Male vulnerability is bunk and it's bullshit, <laughs> and it, it is a flaming disaster for any man to pick up and say, yeah, I just need to be more vulnerable to, with my woman. Yeah. I, I, I have examples after examples after examples. Okay. This does not work. It never has worked, and they're they want to change the meaning of vulnerable into strength. Can you believe it? You know, I did the work on it. History goes Anything back to, to 2010. It it's, she's an academic that wanted to sell books. She reversed the meaning of vulnerable means to be woundable or weak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you couple that with, I need to be more weak and more woundable, yeah. there's no woman alive that's going to find that attractive. <laughs> no. But there's women that like the word solid that go around it. And academics saw that, especially the Marxist feminists, mm -hmm. and think oppressor, oppressed. What an excellent weapon to use against men in popular yeah. culture. Then we get TED Talks. We get multiple books. Oprah comes out and says, men has got to be more vulnerable so us women can make more money than them at the <laughs> workplace. Mm -hmm. And corporate America says, oh, fuck yes. We're going to sell so much shit because mm -hmm. women are going to want shit now because yeah. they like to shop. And they're right. And women now are starting to outpace men financially. Mm -hmm. What does that All do the for time. their chances of having fulfillment in life? They sell it for the ability to buy the latest Barbie handbag and go see the new Barbie movie. <laughs> God bless them. <laughs> so I, did I answer your question even a yeah, little bit? You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. And last question is going to be appearance and the character of a dominant appearance. I mean, a, a dominant presence. Like why should the next young man or man period pick up the book and make sure that they understand like the meaning of masculine presence. Like, like why is that like through your book? Why should they? Because yeah. they're going to have a fulfilled life. They're going to meet their nature's demand of being a, a masculine man. It's at their core. You've been told that, well, maybe you're not a man. Maybe you're a woman. <laughs> you were born with this equipment. You were born with the right hormones. Mm. You're under environmental assault, but to be a man is to be fulfilled. My ancestors, they were pretty damn masculine. I, they got in 50-foot boats and went on 40-foot wave seas, you know? Yeah. Why? Because there's a chance for them to be free and to find poon when they landed, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? Yeah. They, were, they were hardcore, yeah. and uh, that built a huge empire and a civilization that's lasted, and it provided all the comforts we have today. Yes, was it brutal? Yes. Was there actually good things about it? Love, peace, family? Yes, they were strong family. You know, was it so much that they would rape their slaves and do all that stuff? Some of that occurred, but guess what? They would kill a man for raping a woman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes without even a trial. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't what everybody thinks. And uh, there was a lot of good. But then there was also plenty of bad, just like mm. us today. Mm -hmm. But they were masculine, and that did a lot for us. Did it cause wars? Sure. Men are going to compete. They're going to compete in every arena. I think the more masculine we are today, actually the less conflict we're going to have. Okay. I, I really do, because when you don't have a solid masculine presence about you, mm. you become desperate to compete, to get up on that hierarchy. Mm -hmm. And in order to prove that, you're going to even become violent. 
the most dominant masculine presence men that I know are not. Why? Because they're successful and they can exercise power, which I said was influence. Every young man that wants this book wants to exercise some sort of influence socially. Mm -hmm. Even if they play video games on Twitch, what are they doing that for? To exercise some power, yeah. some influence yeah. socially and get some, I call it <laughs> validation. Let's talk about yeah. validation for a minute because I don't want to get out of here without talking about validation. That's a big part of the book. People need validation. Mm -hmm. There's two forms. Yeah. And I talk about two forms. And let's break it down and make it simple. And this is, this, if nothing else, this is why you should buy the book is to learn how to self validate. validate. Okay, self validate. There's external validation. Mm -hmm. Let me use an example. We all know what a battery is. It holds yeah. a little electrical charge. This is, let's say that's an external validation that I can get, makes me feel good. I use the charge and now I can't recharge the battery. I gotta get another one, mm -hmm. right? That's a lot like Instagram models. Yeah. I got my likes. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Oh, my likes are down. Um, Where am I gonna get my next? Let me post I need my next likes. Let me, let, me, let me turn around and take a picture. Yeah. Oh, I got more likes. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is external validation. This is really critical to females, but it is to males too. Yeah, I see it. There's a problem with it though. While it generates temporary happiness, mm -hmm. there's really no fulfillment in external validation. It's nice to have, it makes you feel good, like you've done something good, yeah. but it's hollow and it's yeah. fleeting. This is why long-term relationships also have problems because they're always looking to the other for external validation yeah. and it can't be sustained that way. Because you're always searching And that's for why you see middle-aged women it. saying, he did not make me happy, I had to leave. Mm -hmm. yeah. It never, no one will ever make you happy. Now, remember that battery, easy to buy, easy to get. Self-validation is like, you know, going to the Home Depot and buying a 10K generator that runs on two different fuels, mm -hmm. you know, LP and gas. Now I got to decide which fuel to put in. I got to know how to do the oil. I got to know how to turn it on. How do I connect it to the grid? Mm -hmm. All of that stuff. But guess what? Once I got it going, that thing can generate forever and I don't need to go get another one. Yeah. As long as I maintain it, I got validation forever. That brings fulfillment, but it requires work. So that is self-validation. And what I teach you to do here is be able to self-validate and live in the moment. Remember, a lot of depression, there is clinical depression, but a lot of depression comes from what's happened in your past. Mm -hmm. I'm depressed about what happened, I can't change it. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna think about it. If I think about it long enough, maybe, maybe I'll never have it happen again. Yeah. But I'm still depressed about it. Yeah. And anxiety is about, it might happen again in the future. Mm -hmm. So I'm anxious about mm -hmm. that happening again. I try to whittle that down in the book so that you can self-validate and live in that moment of right now. And I, I lean on some Stoics for that because once you know that, really, we're only here right now. Mm -hmm. And there is actually nothing else there right this moment for you, for yeah. you, for me. When you realize that, we can actually enjoy this moment because we're alive. You know, nothing else has happened yet. Doesn't mean not to prepare for it, but it kind of takes a big burden off you having to worry about what's happened and what's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a bit of self-validation right in the moment. So I try to teach guys how to self-validate and why that's so important. When you learn that coupled with your own mental point of origin, everything gets easier. It's easier to quit that lower paying job and go get another one. It's mm -hmm. easier to compete. It's easier to do stuff because at the end of the chapter on validation, I say, look, every man has what it takes. What, everything you need is in actions. If you take actions, you have everything you need to become. But you have to take action. Mm -hmm. okay. And so and you can only take action in the moment. You can't take it in the past, and you can't take it in the future. You have to take it right now. So that's kind of, the, that's kind of what the book's about. It's kind of inspirational, motivational, giving you some thought experiments to do and to kind of question your identity. And is it the identity you really want to project out into the world mm -hmm. and use it to bend reality to your will? And if it's not, there's some tools in there that'll let you shape it over time. Mm -hmm. Okay, well said. And should they be expecting audio? Are you doing audio? Yep, there'll be an audio book out by the end of summer. End of summer. Yeah, okay. absolutely. There you go. So you'll be able to catch that all on Amazon, guys. And you can see me uh, on my website, www.becomedurable.com. All my video lectures are there. And also my monthly membership, which is a monthly uh, men's group meeting that's on these specific issues and even more. Mm -hmm. So we do focus a lot on those seven skills. Okay. 
All right, man. Yeah, can you tell check them out. Yeah, can you Literally. tell where to find you? Sure, you can find me on Instagram at RP Thor. You can find me on Twitter at Pill Thor. You can see me on Rule Zero every Saturday, and you can see me on the Dragon Ship on RP Thor YouTube channel. Okay. Uh, so you can do that. And I got, I got, I didn't bring any, but I got a merch store now. Oh, you did? Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Oh uh, man, I've like got every... quite a bit of merch there from. Let us know. And we'll plug businesses. it into the description. It's uh, it's all R, It's uh, just search RP Thor on Redbubble. Okay. okay. I have all my own power lineman designs. I used to be a graphic artist for my company. Mm-hmm. I did a few items there, so I'm bringing those back. Plus, I did a bunch of Rule Zero stuff you can get there. And, mm-hmm. of course, there's a few Dragon Ship items that you can get there as well. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Cool, cool, man. Appreciate you coming back again. Of if, course. If we can plan this right, man, we'll have you, I believe so, hopefully sure. next month. Yeah. That'd be fantastic. We'll get that out there with another guest. Get you all set up. That'd be a good have, show. Have you ever been on a panel with ladies before? Oh, sure. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, I was on Fresh and Fit and... And then oh, okay. I was on one with uh, Sterling Cooper and Janelle. And some oh, you were? Okay, okay, okay. Perfect, no, perfect. perfect. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. yeah, it'll work out good. Yeah, we're going to do it. <laughs> I'm not too confrontational. I, I'm more of a finesse guy, to be honest mm-hmm. with you. Yeah. It's not worth it to me. Yeah. I don't have anything. I don't have a dog in the hunt. Yeah, I, I already got what I got, and yeah, I'm, I'm I got good. You. I got you, I got <laughs> so, you. I mean, I can have fun with it and make it entertaining, but I'm, I, I get the ladies yeah. are fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. All, all his info will be at the bottom, man. Tap in for sure. We have, we'll have him back again soon. So follow, yes. man. Buy the book. Show him some love. BBC, we out. Yeah. Let's go.